we flew into Damascus from Doha and met up with a friend who was going to show us around for three days. We look back on our trip to Syria in 2009 with new appreciation at being able to see such a wonderful country before the onset of civil war. We carried our bags up eight flights of stairs. It was early evening and all the starlings were out madly flying about. We had a great view from the veranda of the apartment. In the morning, we caught a taxi to visit the old city. The traffic was wonderfully chaotic, a bit like Italian drivers jostling for position. But the fares are relatively cheap and they are the best way to get around. The old city of Damascus is behind stone walls. We crossed under the main street to the Souk al Hamadiyya. We wandered around the myriad of lanes, just taking in one of the oldest cities in the world. We found the courtyard of the old Damascus Hotel, where our friend stayed when she first arrived in Damascus. At one stage we popped outside the city walls onto our main road before entering back in via Bab Tuma. For a rest we found a local restaurant, Bait Jabu and had a refreshing drink called Polo, which is a combination of mint and lemon. After a light meal, we walked around some more and joined the colourful shops and buildings, before returning back to the apartment. The next day we hired a car to take us to some towns on the outskirts of Damascus. The first on the list was Sednaya, a town some 27 kilometres north in the mountains, famous for its convent of Our Lady of Sednaya. The town has been inhabited since at least the 6th century BC, when it was known by its Aramaic name, Danaba. The convent was constructed by the Emperor Justinian I in 547 AD. All the exploring made us hungry, so we drove to Paradise Restaurant, a popular place with locals, and we indulged in a feast. After lunch we continued on to visit Malula, which has two monasteries. We visited Ma Takla. This monastery holds the remains of Saint Takla, who according to later legend, was being pursued by soldiers of her father to capture her because of her Christian faith. She came upon a mountain, and after praying, the mountain split open and let her escape through. The town gets its name from this split. We flew out of Damascus the next day to meet up with friends in Turkey. However, a month later we returned to Damascus as part of an intrepid trip, travelling from Cairo to Istanbul. We came in by taxi from Jordan, and as we were ahead of the others in our group, we were offered some lunch at the local taxi depot. After dropping our stuff off at the local hotel, we all headed into the old city.
The Umayyad Mosque is one of the largest and oldest in the world. Its courtyard is huge, and there are stunningly beautiful mosaics on the walls. We enjoyed soaking up the history and atmosphere of the place. The Azim Palace was built in 1749 by the governor of Damascus. It's built with striped stonework, achieved by alternating layers of black basalt and limestone. In the 20th century, it was sold to the French to become an institute of archaeology and Islamic art. Badly damaged by fire during uprisings against the French in 1925, it has since been fully restored. As we have been doing a fair bit of walking, we stopped for a welcome cup of tea at Café Nufara and listened to a local storyteller. The next day we caught local transport to Palmyra and transferred to a very old Mercedes bus to climb up to an ancient Muslim citadel overlooking the city. In the morning, we walked into a stiff wind to the Temple of Bell Ruins. In 267, the local ruler was assassinated and his second wife, Zenobia, took over. Rome refused to recognise this arrangement. The emperor dispatched an army to deal with the rebel queen. Zenobia met the Roman force in battle and defeated it. Zenobia declared her independence from Rome and had coins minted bearing her image. The Roman Emperor could not stomach such a show of open defiance and sent a large army which defeated Zenobia. Zenobia's defeat marked the end of Palmyra's prosperity. We were all excited as we drove from Palmyra to Crac de Chevalier a magnificent crusader castle sitting on top of a high hill guarding the Homs Gap. Lawrence of Arabia described Crac de Chevalier as perhaps the best preserved and most wholly admirable castle in the world. We just had a great time exploring its inner workings.
We got into a conversation with some interested locals at the bus station, waiting for our bus to Aleppo on our last stop in Syria. Aleppo is the largest city in Syria and one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. The city was a hive of activity, full of unusual buildings, bread being dried on the street fence. It had a really good buzz and vibrancy about it. Souk al Medina was magnificent, with a thousand different stalls where you could find anything you could think of to buy. We were lucky to be located in a small hotel just off the souk, so we had plenty of time to explore. Lunch in Aleppo. It is heartbreaking to see the recent images of war in a shattered city. We can only hope and pray that someday in the near future, some normalcy can resume.